the Ortho PAC, hosted by Sam Dyer. Welcome to the Ortho PAC, where we discuss up-to-date orthopedic topics for the busy clinician. I invite you to sit back and relax as I... We're on today with Josh Porter. Josh practices preventative medicine, and he gave a talk recently at our Phoenix conference on obesity medicine and optimizing the orthopedic surgery patient. So if we're talking about the patient who's going to have a surgical procedure and they're on one of these medications, yeah. what kinds of things do we need to think about or do they need to think about perioperatively? Well, I think you got to, obviously, you're ultimately going to defer back to whoever is prescribing it. But, you know, in general, you're going to take some time off before the surgery. You want to, if the, you know, from the gastroparesis standpoint, anesthesia, they're going to be a little hesitant to to be putting somebody to sleep, especially if based off of the potential for aspiration, things like that. If you've got a medication that's not slowing the contents of the stomach very fast, then there's potential that a 12-hour window of being MPO would not be effective or a risk of aspiration. And so the anesthesia groups, most of them are going to want you to, to kind of take a hiatus for at least a week, sometimes two weeks prior to surgery. And I think that's a very safe, reasonable option. You know, postoperatively, one of the things that I think Sam, you and I, that we're going to touch on in, in this conversation was just, what do you do with the patient who needs pain medicine, right? And, and now I'm giving them a medication that's going to kind of slow the contents of that medication, metabolically being broken down, how effective is that? For obesity management, you're kind of looking to a bigger picture, meaning if somebody's had a rotator cuff surgery and they're taking hydrocodone or oxycodone every six hours to manage their pain, I don't know that I'm overly worried about how much weight they're going to lose that week. I'm probably going to hold off until they're getting out of the house, they're feeling better, they're maybe down to some Tylenol or occasional ibuprofen. So I, I would just have the opinion of just kind of take a step back. Don't be, don't be aggressive in trying to get that restarted just so that you don't create potential complications for that patient that is going to hinder their ability to absorb a pain medication or something like that, because then that's going to, that, that's not going to bode well for the patient or the surgeon that you're trying to help. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't want to have issues with that. Uh, no. Fewer phone calls, the better, right? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. Well, how long, let's say if somebody stopped the meds, you know, the GLP, the GIP, how long after stopping those, would they continue to have GI effects in your experience? Yeah. So it's, let's say if somebody's having a bad outcome or something like that, usually within a few days, honestly. So typically if you just hold it for at least, I mean, they're only doing it once a week, but by the end of the, by, by the next go around when their dose is due, their side effects have, have resolved 99% of the time. So it's it's usually if you have a little bit of queasiness or a little bit of nausea after a dose, it's going to be, you know, intermittent and it's going to be, you know, three days typically is going to be the max. I have had some, you know, if you want to talk about horror stories where we've dosed patients and they took more than the recommended dose, you know, user error or what have you. And, you know, they didn't, they did not do well for a few days. I mean, so those, those are real side effects that people have to be aware of when it comes to the nausea and, and vomiting and things like that. you got to be really, really cautious with these medications and, and just, and deal with somebody who knows how to manage it and really give you really good education on these things. All right, Josh, what do you tell our ortho colleagues? Now, this is the orthopedic podcast, not the preventative right. medicine podcast. So you got to put on that ortho hat. Yeah. And when I ask this question, they're going to say, well, I don't care about weight loss. You know, you, you got to go lose weight. That's not my job. Mm -hmm. Why Why is that the wrong attitude? Why, why do we need to care more about these folks? Yeah. I mean, I think the the reality is most of us got into this career path, regardless of what specialty you're in, but with the, with one reason, and that was to help people, right? And we've got this desire to make an impact in people. And if you find yourself as an orthopedic PA, you get to do that through the practice of orthopedic surgery. But ultimately, that better outcome for that patient may often involve having a conversation with them that says, look, I'm not the person who's going to manage this, but this is what's going to give you the best outcome, is to wait on this surgery and go see this person have have this discussion, let somebody help you, because it's going to make their outcomes better, which ultimately is to your benefit as a provider, because patients want to be told the truth. Now, and again, I've worked with some really good surgeons over the years where I've learned that from an orthopedic standpoint, you know, when I first got out of school, I worked with a young orthopedic surgeon. Those guys may make some willingness to choose to operate on things that five, six, seven years down the 
the line, they're going to be like, there's no way I'm operating. That. They become more selective. And I think that's just the, what I would encourage orthopedic PAs to, to just have that thought of how am I treating this patient to have the best outcome? How can I be selective for their sake? And it ultimately it comes back to, again, it benefits you as a provider, makes you look really good when you're looking at this holistically. I think the biggest problem for most of us in orthopedics is always a volume issue, right? We Most orthopedic PAs are seeing, you know, 25 to 40 patients, depending on their specialty per day. That's a tough lot to have when you, you now you, you're going to, I'm asking you to have a conversation about weight loss. No, I'm not asking you to do that. I'm just asking you to be mindful of things that maybe you could have a couple people in your community that do stuff, something like I do and say, Hey, just have a conversation with this person. You know, this is a provider I trust just like you do with any other referrals. Just consider something like this as a great referral for the outcome of the patient. All right, Josh. So I'm I'm sitting across from a patient, and I'm telling them, "Look, your BMI is 50, and mm-hmm. there's no way that you know Dr. Smith is going to do your knee replacement until you lose some weight." And I know you've tried all this stuff. I really can't help you with this, but you know, there is gastric bypass option, but you got a mm-hmm. lot of other comorbidities. I know this guy. His name is Josh Porter. And he can help you. Where is Josh Porter where I live? How do I make that referral? Where do I send that patient? Yeah. Well, that's a great question. And, you know, I don't know that there's, there are plenty of places who practice preventative health. But again, if you have good contacts with primary care providers, that's probably where I would start if they're willing to to work with the patient on weight loss. I mean, that, that would kind of fall into their area of expertise if they're, if they're interested in doing it. If they're not, then maybe Sam, we need to come up with a resource for some preventative health providers in the areas, in certain areas of, of the country for orthopedic people. But, but yeah, I think that would be the place to start is more of your GP. Bariatric surgery is great, but it's, is that the right thing for everybody? Probably not. And I don't, I, I'd probably try to go a little bit more holistic before I would go towards that outcome. So I think I would probably defer back to the PCP initially or an endocrinologist if they've got an endocrinologist, they're diabetic. That's always a great referral back. Perfect. All right, Josh, anything else that you would like to add about obesity and optimization of the orthopedic surgical patient? Like I said a minute ago, it's more about patient outcomes being where ultimately you can tell a patient exactly what to do, whether it's orthopedics or obesity, the patient ultimately has to take ownership. And I think that's something you got to learn that, hey, I can give somebody resources, but until they get to that point where they have the desire to change, then they're not they're not going to change. And I have those conversations with people a lot. So just not being so hard on yourself if they don't have that outcome or they're not willing to do it or they try to give you a, the runaround as like, well, I've tried that or I don't want to do that. You know, if somebody just operate on me, just for, just that, that reminder that, you know what, ultimately the patient has to take ownership of their health. The more we can encourage them to do, I think the better overall we'll all be as providers all right josh thank you so much for being on the podcast listeners josh porter thanks sam you're welcome thanks for coming on josh i appreciate you taking time let's stay in touch we'll be in nashville here pretty quick i hope you can come by yeah make sure you guys come by and say hi thank you for joining the ortho pac podcast please subscribe to our podcast if this has been helpful please take a moment to leave a review 